Welcome to another Blab. I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher, prescription for your transformation, hashtag real people and hashtag real conversations. You know, and it's always about this intelligence that surrounds us, the, the body intelligence, brain intelligence, energy intelligence, but all the intelligent people out there. And I was delighted to meet this fellow the other day and brought this brilliant concept, which is so obvious that it's we just don't think about it. And when you hear about it, you'll realize, well, yeah, obviously. So one of the things, one of the distinctions that, that we face in this life is that we deal with challenges. And oftentimes these challenges just stop us midstream in the direction that we want to go. Sometimes it stops us forever. And so understanding how we can deal with challenges is one of the keys to being successful in life. And again, in that space of what you don't know, you don't know. And I always come back to this thing about, you know, being that accidental tourist in your own life. Are you just going to bump into things that are magical and that's your adventure? Or are you actively going to pursue as a tour guide? We'll find out where the magical places are, where the adventures are, <coughs> and talking to the right people to get those answers. So that requires some investigation. That requires having access to what I call new voices and new solutions. So think about this for a moment. Most people are thinking that their life ends at 50. Interesting, isn't that? And if you haven't achieved anything by the age of 50, then it's over. It's done. But it's not true. And a person that's going to prove that is Dale Gurney, an author, a speaker, and a founder of the Back 40. Welcome, Daryl. Welcome to my show. Thanks, Mark. Good to be with you. It's great to be with you. And I was really delighted and excited because... I'm also in that age bracket, you know, over 50, and I don't want to admit it to too many people. And it's interesting what you shared with me about what it is that you do. And I'd like you to share that with our listeners. Well, I want, can I just make a couple of comments just on everything that you've said thus far that I think would be really valuable? Um, one thing you said is I don't want to admit it. Now, why is that? See, I think we have this cultural stigma, and the stigma is, is that when people are getting over 50 or whatever, that, <clears throat> and I mean, <clears throat> you're all about what's possible for people, but even us, even us that are all about that are at the effect of this stigma that over 50 means older, and therefore something is less. Is it that we have less possibilities? Is it we can do less? Is it our body is less? I don't know, but 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 there's this thing that when people get over 40 or 50, our mentality, especially in the Western society, is it gonna be on your way out. And that's what I wanna transform, is I wanna transform that conversation that awesome. things are declining <clears throat> after 50 versus what if this is where it starts? What if, what if rather than we have it that, you know, the first half of life is getting all this stuff done so that we can move towards retirement and we've got all our bank accounts and our cars and our houses and everything. That's all good. I'm not diminishing that. <clears throat> but what if the first half of life was just R&D? What if it was just research and development? What if, I don't know, I, I know a little bit about you and you have a really illustrious beginning <clears throat> of your career, you know, at a very early age, you know, already being through medical school and already doing some amazing things. That's all awesome. I think to a certain degree, many of us though, don't know at 20 or 22, what we really want to do, we may be in step with what other people expected of us. We might be <clears throat> reacting to our past and overcoming it, but it's all kind of machinery. I don't know that it's all conscious design, but I say that in that first 40, 50 years of, I call it doing lab experiments, that we really get to figure out who we really are, what our passions really are our proclivities, our tendencies. And I think that at that midlife juncture, if we can take a look back at what we've learned about ourselves, I say that we can create a purposeful 
second half. And I think it's the second half that we really came for. And we should be damn proud that we're over 50 because now we can really do what we came here to do. How do you and like I, that for a stump speech? <laughs> uh, no, and I, I totally agree with that. And, you know, that's this yeah. mantra that we have, you know, and, and listening to all the TV commercials and all the other stories that you're, you're going to get old and you're going to, you know, feel all sorts of uh, pain and, and, you know, physical abnormalities and everything else. And, and that goes hand in hand with just getting old. And what does old mean? Well, you can't do anything anymore. You're going to be walking around with a, a walker or something like that or in a wheelchair and, and you can't have that life that you desire. And what's interesting too is that people spend so much time, you know, very much, you know, focused on work and work and work and work and work and not really enjoying the life. And then they get to this point when they're 50, it's like, well, what really happened these last 30 or 40 years? Now what? You know, what have I got to show for it? And it's interesting because you talk about this midlife crisis. And and I think that's just a very bad or very, it's a misrepresentation of what really is happening. And I do think, I, what I, I do think what happens actually is this, is that every seven to 10 years, we kind of go through this process of discovery of purpose and get to a point where we can start repurposing our life again. But the big one happens around 40 or 50, and that's where you get to come in, where you get to support people to have that realization that the first 40 was R&D, research and development, so that, you know, let's make sure that you've got a healthy body at the age of 50 so that you really can live your life. Yeah, you have the healthy body, and you also – have the healthy getting feedback i don't know if there's feedback yet, and if it's, um, something going off but i'll just keep talking okay i don't get it anymore cool so not a, yeah the healthy body and you're a doctor and and that's of course critical but it's the healthy mind and it's the healthy spirit of possibility because most often people get to be a certain age and it's like oh I don't do those things or I'm not like that <clears throat> or they get themselves more and more and more in a box versus the possibility and play of a 22 year old. See, when you're 22, <clears throat> you don't know what's not possible. You don't know, you know, you haven't done things enough. And so we can call it wisdom when you get to be 50, but we could also call it being blocked in by what you think you know based on things that have happened. And when you talk about crisis, that's another conversation that me and my partner want to change the 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 conversation in the in the in the culture <clears throat> because midlife crisis is something to avoid. I have it that it's midlife opportunity. I have it that it's an initiation. It's actually the welcome to the party yep. of what you really came for. Now, it's usually preceded by bad stuff, the bad stuff happening. But one of the things that we do in our program, getting feedback again. Um, one of the things we do in our program is we have people look at that first 50 years, even all that bad stuff that happened at midlife, and we have them recontextualize it as if they designed it all. And if you can go back and look at your past from the point of view that you designed it all perfectly so that you could have the, so that you could have the insights. Just, uh, just so much feedback happening. Do, do, you, do you have a headset that you can use? Well, it's not feedback on my part. I'm hearing it from you after I speak. So, um, yeah, it wasn't happening a while ago. I'm going to just try to go past it. <clears throat> um, so the point is, and it's not happening again now, so it's good. Whatever's well, happening. Maybe you're too, the maybe point you're is too close to the microphone. 
and then uh, it seems like okay, the good. further away you are, I hear you perfectly. There's no interference whatsoever. Okay, good. And probably I'm too passionate. Okay. I should turn my passion. Into that. But the point is this, is if you can go back and all those significant events, those things that you could entertain that you were a victim of, or those things that shaped you that you wish had not happened, if you can re-look at them from the point of view that they were perfectly designed so that you could learn your self-expression directly, you could learn what you're here to do. It's those, it's that stuff that where is the is the fuel for our purpose. Okay. And basically what I'm saying is, is that if you can go own and even be cause in the matter of your past. That gives you the power to now cause your future. And you can do that in a playful, free-spirited way of a 22-year-old willing to try things, willing to, you know, play first before you got it all sorted out, willing to take risks. Most people at 50 will avoid risks like the plane. And that's when life shuts down. Yeah, and, and that's really true. And and getting back to what you were saying earlier about the uh, the bad part, as you as you call it, of the midlife crisis, I just referred to that as a state of confusion. And it's a state of confusion because people seem to be lost because they've they've accomplished whatever they've accomplished, but there there's an emptiness in them, and it has nothing to. Many people refer to the relationship with their spouse, the partner. And, you know, there's a big fuss about it. And the truth is, is that, you know, it's important for us to have meaning in life. Our life has to mean something. It has to, there has to be some sort of legacy, you know, so that makes us feel good. I mean, it's just inherent in our human behavior psychology that we have a, a, a need that's called significance. And so with that in mind, when our life is no longer significant, especially when we, when we deal with all the, the the cultural hypnosis, if you will, media hypnosis, when you see all these extremely successful people, but they are very unique. They're not like everybody else. I mean, they're not these, I mean, you have the celebrities, the actors, or you have book writers or, or whomever, you know, multimillionaires and billionaires. Yeah, those are very unique individuals. And that's a very, very small percentage of this world. But what about the rest of us? We cannot compare ourselves to them. And therefore, if we're not somebody at the age of 50, then we're nobody and people are lost and that's why they have that crisis. And so what I think is just awesome and, and you offer these programs where you really do help people reflect and say, yeah, you know, my 40, my first 40 is the cause of the next 40 that's just going to be absolutely wonderful. And this is how we can do it. You just need to dial into certain things, to certain elements. I always come back to the to the body part as well is really getting focused on an ideal physiology because that's actually something I'm doing myself. And so that you can do all the crazy stuff and fun stuff and adventurous stuff. There is no reason for you not to do that. And and yeah, it could be a little risky at times, but uh, hey, why not? Well, and when I talk about risk, I don't necessarily mean somebody's got to have the physicalness to jump off of, you know, do a bungee jump or something, although that's a cool thing. Um, but I'm talking about risk, you know, risk to start a business after 50, oh, yeah. risk to um, try try relationships again after you've been married two or three times, you know, risks to stick your neck out and you know, in other words, the tendency is towards safety. The tendency is towards knowing, you know, and again, like I said, you know, wisdom for wisdom's sake is fine, but when it becomes limiting, right. you know, like um, that's not that, you know, I'm not like that or I'm not like this. It's like, you know, there's a lot of the world and a lot of experiences for people to play in if they could get themselves in the mind of a 22 year old again. And that's just what we're supporting <clears throat> is to not be at the effect of everything that's come before, 
to be able to see that it designed you so that now for this next 40, for this back 40, and here's the thing, another thing you brought up at the beginning that I just want to point out is you said, now when you hear this, it's going to be obvious. It's going to sound obvious. <clears throat> I don't think it's obvious to most people that their second half can be totally independent of their first half. And I don't think it's obvious <clears throat> that a second half can be radical. But what is radical is if you can take your life, your second half, the back 40, and design from nothing and go anywhere with it. You're not shaped by beliefs. You're not shaped by things that happen. So I think it is a little radical. And, and, if, and, and if I could just add some real boots on the ground to this versus all theory. You know, at 42, <clears throat> I was looking at my son sleeping in my bed one morning and he was laying in my bed because my parents were in from out of town. They were lending me another $25,000 to stay in a custody suit where I was fighting to maintain, you know, half custody of my son. And, you know, it was a million dollar, a half million dollar, thank God. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's thank God or whatever, but it was a half million dollar custody suit. And I was sitting there looking at him thinking, okay, everything up till now has rendered me virtually broke in a half million dollar custody suit, you know, <clears throat> fighting to maintain my relationship with my son. I say that because it was at that point, Bart, where it was like, wow, I sure don't have much to show for this first half of life. And then it was then that it just kind of came to me that it's like, wow, what if all of this was by design? And what if anything's possible from here on out? And then the book, <clears throat> the book kind of came through as well. The book is written. It's called The Back 40 seven critical embraces for life's radical second half and i basically say that by embracing certain things we can fulfill on the second half of purpose and that's exactly what you're talking about is we want to have meaning i've spent 30 years working with people in their careers i'm a career coach executive coach a lot of times people think that oh retirement is going to be my ties and you know, golf, but that wears out real yeah. soon. People want to feel purpose, yeah. you know? Yeah. Anyhow, sorry for my soapbox. Yeah. No, <laughs> and I think it's wonderful. I think, no. it, and I think it's wonderful. people deserve to people. discover the fact that discover. they just don't have to settle, you know, with what program was put into them and then have that belief that life is just going to end. And, you know, I wrote a, a, uh, a Facebook uh, post, uh, what was it, yesterday, where it's about, you know, the journey. You know, we talk about this journey from A to Z. And it almost seems like that race to the finish starts at birth, sometimes even before birth. And we're so focused on just doing that, that you know the real journey is the experience the magic and the excitement and the adventure is actually every inch along the way and the finish and so at any given point whether you're 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or whatever it is you know your past is also the cause of this moment and your future and and what i when i talk to people when i do my talks I basically say this is first of all, I say, look, I celebrate my faults and my weaknesses and it's not out of arrogance or naivete. It's just realizing, wow, these are all lessons that I can use for my future. But more importantly, everyone is the summation or this very moment. You are the summation of all your decisions, all your beliefs, all your experiences up to this very moment. So it's your fault that you are here right now. And so that's a great, you know, you know, distinction because that means that you can start mm -hmm. deciding, okay, who am I? What is my identity? Owning your own greatness and your faults 
and not being subjected to what the rest of the world is telling you you should be. And so in that place, you've got that independence to then make that decision. Look, this is what I want my life to be from now on. And that can happen at any age, but because culturally where we stand, it typically does really happen at the age of 50. And so that's what's great. And, and now I understand you've got programs that people can go through. You have one coming up in Los Angeles. Is that correct? Yep, April 8th, 9th, and 10th at the Lux Sunset Boulevard Hotel. We're hosting our Back 40 Infuse program. Infuse stands for igniting a new formula of unique self-expression, which is what everything is. Oh, right. I love that. Here. So igniting a new formula for unique self-expression. Igniting a new formula for unique of unique self-expression. Oh, I love that. You came up with that, right? Excellent. Uh, yeah, well. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And it's really, it's, what, it's everything you and I have been talking about. It's, you know, it's just a, it's like that's what Back 40 is about. What is this new formula of self-expression that I have already designed right. based on everything I did? And by the way, can I say one thing about what yeah. you said? You said, you know, everything that brought you to here is your fault. And I'm big on words. I'm just a big person on words. And I I agree that I say that it's by your creation than your fault. You created it all. And if you created all this and you did it for everything you've now learned about you, then guess what? You can create it from here on out. Right. And that's that new form. The reason I say your fault and I say it with a smile on my face and a bit of tongue in cheek, because in my talks, I talk about something else and where a lot of people just are the victim. They blame the rest of the world. It's their fault for where they are right now. When the truth is, it's your fault. It's your fault that you read it right now. And you should celebrate that and celebrate, you know, the opportunity as you, you're doing to open up this world where yeah it's okay to to have a magnificent life after 40. that's awesome yeah so yeah you know what i what, what, no, go, sorry, ahead. go ahead go ahead daryl well i was just gonna say you know i love that and we're both on the same page here basically what i say is that look there's two camps you can be in life you can be that you're a victim and at the effect of the things that have happened to you or the people or whatever in your life, or you can be that you caused it all. Neither of them are true. They're just possible ways to look at life, but one of them is gonna empower you and one of them isn't. Right. So choose, choose which path you wanna take. Did you cause it all? And can you therefore create again? Or are you just blown by the wind? You know, and that's precisely the reason for my platform. My platform really is all about getting new voices, new solutions. So <clears throat> it's going to be easier for you to be at the cause of your own life. Because ultimately, you know, you have free will. As much as people choose not to believe that that's the truth. Yeah, you have a free will to believe certain things. You have the beliefs to value certain things. You have you have the free will. I'm sorry. You have the free will to, to have the value, <clears throat> and again, you have the free will to decide what what things mean and what what things you'll do. And so, with this platform, it the, the challenge that we do have, which I discovered for myself, was you know you don't know what you don't know. And I got very fortunate that I was introduced in this whole world of personal growth that I didn't even know existed. You know, I was at the pinnacle of, of med medical education. I mean, as a plastic surgeon, no one really has more training than, than a plastic surgeon. And I thought I knew everything. And it wasn't out of arrogance. It was actually out of, you know, ignorance. And so that's why I like this platform. That's why I like to invite people like you who've got solutions that may work for, for someone and they may not work for someone else, but then they can find another solution. Or it can be the stepping stone to something even greater. And so that's what's ex exciting and, and certainly for so many people, because I think so many people 
they just get stuck in this rut and they just don't know and that realization and I'm, I'm excited to promote this that realization that yeah you know what life does begin after you know 40 or begins after 50. i think marion williamson also wrote a book that life begins after uh 50 for but after menopause i guess and so that's really what the truth is and so i really want to thank you for today and once again for people to get a hold of you daryl how do they get a hold of you uh if they go to the back 40.com t-h-e-b-a-c-k-f-o-r-t-y.com uh, we have our uh, page up, uh, some other radio interviews there, some videos there about the work that we're doing, and uh, some contact info there as well. So it's a great place to go to, and it's a great chance for you to uh, reignite your life and uh, repurpose your life, whatever age you are, by the way. So, And uh, do you have a book? Did you come out with a book? Well, uh, the book is written, uh, The Back 47 Critical Embraces for Life's Radical Second Half. What we're doing is we're putting on programs first because then we want to infuse people's stories into the book. Like if you go see the video on the page, there's a 72-year-old woman there, very successful yes, woman, who says she's now ready. She's ready to tackle her purposeful second half. I mean, that's inspiring. <laughs> we're going to put those stories in the book. Can we just uh, join? Can we Jeremy? just uh, join? Um, okay. I don't know if you have any questions, Jeremy. We're talking about the back 40 and life begins after 40. and But we're just about to wrap it up. So just you, would you like to summarize for the people that just joined us what you're all about so that they can hear it? Sure. sure. Well, what we're all... What we're all about is that anything is possible and you have not done what you came here to do, no matter what your age. You have not done what you came here to do. So let's mine that first half to create that purposeful back 40. And rather than being critical of the back 40 or the, the first 40 of not being good enough, it's just your prep time. It's just like you're going to school so that you can get ready for the time of your life after 40. It's it's all about the second half. The second half is what we came here for. It's uh, it, We're not done no matter what we've done by 40 or 50. It's all ahead. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Daryl, and I look forward to uh, talking to you in the future. Thank you. Really thank you. I really appreciate what you're doing with your platform, uh, Bart. It's awesome that you're bringing out these kind of uh don't know what you don't know uh messages and i appreciate yeah, my it. purpose is is for that for the new voices new solutions but also i'm very passionate about helping people helping people get their message out you know so that people can find you and so that their lives can change because they just heard it on this platform and so i want to thank you for joining me today thank you thank right, you thanks